Hello everyone. This video walks you through a beginning example of a harmonic analysis problem. So let's look at this first chord. So if we look at the bass and the tenor, we have a G, and then we have a D in the altos, then we have a B in the sopranos. It turns out if we just put them like this, then we have it in thirds. So let's look at what the root is, or the lowest note. It turns out that it's G. Since we're in G major, because of its key signature and um, the, uh, the beginning and ending chords, well, we know that that means that we have some kind of a one chord. Now, um, because G is the first scale degree in G major. Now, since between G and B is a major third, and between B and D is a minor third, that means that this is a major triad. So that means that we have a major one chord, and since G, the root, is on the bottom, that means it's in root position, so we don't have an inversion symbol. Uh, now, we look at the next chord, and we find that there is an A, and since uh, the G from the tenors holds it over here, we have a G, then we have a D, then we have a C. Now this isn't stacked in thirds right now, so let's give it a shot to stack it in thirds. I'm going to move the D down here, and we're almost in thirds actually now. Um, the one problem though is this G. This G isn't really cooperating. Now if we look at the tenor line again, which had the G, it looks like the tenor line goes to an F sharp later in its journey. So why don't we change that to an F sharp? Now we see that we're stacked in thirds. So this leads us to believe that right here, this G is a non-chord tone. Um, it turns out that it's actually a suspension. So this means that now our notes are A, F sharp, D, and C. We have now stacked them in thirds. So this means that the root of the chord is D. Since D is the fifth scale degree of in G major. Um, that means that we're dealing with some kind of five chord. Uh, we have four notes, so that means that it, there's going to be a seventh. Um, also, another way to tell is that the quality of the chord has a uh, major triad as D to F is a major third, F to A is a minor third, but then it also has a minor seventh. So that means that um, it has a seven on it. So that means it's a dominant seven. Now if we look at what's in the bass, though, we'll find out the inversion symbol. Now the A is in the bass. Now if we look at this chord, we can find that the A is the fifth of the chord. So that means that this is a 5, 4, 3. Again, I know I've said this before, but just so you know, I don't know how to make this correct. Normally the 3 is underneath the 4. So I apologize for that, but I don't know how to fix it. Um, now we come on to upon our next chord. So there is a B in the bass, a G, then there's a D, and then there's another D. Now right now this isn't stacked in thirds, so let's give it a shot. I'm gonna say that if we bring this B up an octave, we'll be in thirds, and uh, it looks like we are. And we're looking at another G chord, and since it's the same key and there are no accidentals, we can assume it's a G major chord. However, to check, G to B is a major third, B to D is a minor third, so G major. Um, G is the root, so that means it's some kind of one chord. Um, B is on the bit is in the bass, so that means that the third of the chord or the middle note is in the bass. So that means that it's the first inversion. So that means that we have a one six here. Now we look at our next chord. There's a C, there's a G, and there's an E, and then there's another C, so we don't need to double notes that we have again. Um, so let's try to get this into thirds. Um, it looks like if we bring this E down, then we'll be in thirds. So now it looks like we have a C major chord since the lowest note or the root when stacked in thirds, that is. The root is only the lowest note when it's stacked in thirds, um, is a C. So between C and E is a major third, between E and G is a minor third. So that means that we're dealing, well, because C is the fourth scale degree in G major, we're dealing with some kind of four chord. So now, and we know that it's a major four chord, so why don't we put down a big four. Um, now, what's in the bass? Well, C is in the bass. That turns out to be the root. 
so then that means that it's in position so we don't need an inversion symbol now we go on to the next chord um, and then so I was just thinking about how why we disregarded this tone um, we disregarded this tone because if we tried to do the thirds again with that tone it would end up not working so if we go back to this chord really quickly there would be a B and then there'd, there'd be a B and then there'd be an A and then there'd be a D and this doesn't stack in thirds only with the G does it stack in thirds um, anyway back to the chord that we're currently on we see that we have a D a G an E and B now this doesn't stack in thirds either get a little bit closer why don't we bring this D up an octave and again we're pretty close except this E isn't really allowing us to be in thirds I guess unless we're like this but something tells me that it isn't a E minor 7 um, especially because if we look at our next note in the alto line which had the E it turns out to be another D um, so again this looks like a suspension because there's the E is held over from a previous note that the alto had and then it resolves down so I'm gonna assume that actually what the chord is is uh, a D, G, a D, and a B so if we stack those in thirds as we have here that means that the root is a G so it's again some kind of one chord it seems so it's, then it's big one because again it's major G to B major third B, B to D minor third um, then we look at what's in the bass and that's a D now that turns out to be the fifth of the chord so that means that it's a six four uh, now we go on to our next chord and here we have a D and F sharp another D and an A now that stacks in thirds, but again, this looks a bit like a suspension kind of figure. While it does, well, it can be a chord tone in this chord, as another voice has it. If we look at the next alto note, we see that there's a C. So I'm going to put that in as well. Um, and that turns out to be um, another uh, D dominant 7, um, as we had over here. Because uh, D to F sharp, major 3rd, F sharp to A, minor 3rd. D to C minor seventh, so that means that it's a dominant seven. So, um, since D is the fifth scale degree in G major, that means that it's some kind of five. Now, what's in the bass? Well, it turns out that D is in the bass, and since D is in the root, that it, well, since D is the root, excuse me, um, and D is in the bass, that means we're in root position, and so we have a five seven, and then we come on our upon our last chord, we have a G a D, a B, and an A. Now let's try to get these a little bit closer to thirds. Um, so there's a third, but then again the A isn't really helping us out, and it turns out it's another suspension figure. It's held over from a previous note in the soprano and then resolves down. So really we just have G, B, and D. So that means that our root when we stack it in thirds is G, so it's some kind of one chord. Um, since G to B is major third, B to D is a minor third, that means it's a major chord, so it's a major one, it's an uppercase one chord. Um, then G is in the bass, and since G is in the bass and is the root, we're in root position, so we don't need an inversion symbol. And there's our harmonic analysis. If you're wondering how a 4 is going to a 1, 6, 4, it's because this is a cadential 6, 4, so it's really some kind of a dominant figure. Why don't we hear it, just so you know what this sounds like. Sorry, that last chord you heard was just this. Um, so that's how you do an easier example of a harmonic analysis problem.